you know, I have a picture here. It's a, it's a, a big uh, airplane, a big Airbus, and then there's a fighter jet alongside of it. So an Airbus 380, one of the larger ones, I guess, is on its way across the Atlantic. It flies consistently at 500 miles an hour and 30,000 feet. When suddenly a fighter jet, a Eurofighter called a Tempo Mach 2, appears alongside of it. And the pilot of the fighter jet slows down, flies alongside the big Airbus, and greets the pilot of the passenger plane by radio. Airbus, having a boring flight, isn't it? Now have a look here. So he rolls his jet on its back, accelerates, breaks through the sound barrier, rises rapidly to a dizzying height, and then swoops back down almost to the sea level in a breathtaking dive, and he loops back next to the Airbus and asks the pilot, well, how was that? What do you think? And the Airbus pilot answers, well, very impressive, but watch this. The jet pilot watches the Airbus, but nothing happens. It continues to fly straight, the same speed. And after about 15 minutes, the Airbus pilot radios to the fighter jet pilot, well, how was that? Confused, the jet pilot asks, well, what did you do? And the Airbus pilot laughs and says, well, I got up, stretched my leg, talked to a few people, walked back to the aircraft to use the washroom and freshen up, got a cup of coffee and chocolate fudge pastry. <laughs> the moral of this story is that when you're young, speed and adrenaline seems to be great. But as you get older and wiser, you learn that comfort and peace are far more important. <laughs> and this is called SOS, slower, older, smarter. <laughs> <laughs> I dedicate that to seniors like myself. Slower, older, smarter. And speaking of that, uh, in and your, your last song, Ellen, is, is the theme that, that you are expressing the theme this morning. Uh, it, it's about putting life into perspective. And I discovered uh, this is a particular age group. Some of you might be in it, like myself. Uh, I am a senior teenager, which means I'm a senager. <laughs> What'd you say? A senior. Okay, so you didn't know that. You might be a fresh, a new term, senager. Like a senior teenager. In other words, I have everything I've always wanted as a teenager. Only 60 years later, literally. I don't have to go to school or work anymore. I get an allowance every month from the government. I even own my own pad. I don't have a curfew. I have a driver's license and my own car. Well, Carolyn's car. <laughs> I have ID that gets me into any bar or liquor store. The people I hang around with are hardly ever scared. They have been blessed to live this long, and why be scared? I don't have any acne anymore. Life is good. Seenager. Also, you'll feel much more intelligent after reading this if you are a seeing ager. Brains of older people are slow because they know so much. <laughs> when I go in the other room, what I hear for, it's because I know so much. <laughs> people really do not decline mentally with age. It just takes them longer to recall facts because they have more information in their brains. You didn't know that. Scientists believe this also makes you hard of hearing sometimes as it puts pressure on your inner ear because the brain is so full. <laughs> is this some new stuff here for you? <laughs> also, older... <laughs> what? <laughs> also, older people often go to another room to get something, as I just mentioned, and when they get there, they stand wondering what they came into the room for. It is not a memory problem. It's simply nature's way of making older people do more exercise. <laughs> there you have it. 
Um, my message this morning is really based on, on, on this other uh, reading I'd, I'd like to give to you. It's about a page or a page and a half or so. And I, I saw it in a, a, a paper in Forest, Virginia. Uh, uh, in, in it, see what it's called. See, it's called the uh, senior, senior News. <laughs> That's what it says here, Senior News from the Blue Ridge Edition, where we go in, in Vir, Vir, near Lynchburg, Virginia, and it's entitled, All My Possessions for a Moment uh, in Time. And, that's, and I'm going to quote a lot of that uh, paragraph, uh, that, that reading here. And it begins by saying, I, I, when I read it a few years ago, I said, that's going to make a good message. I want to share that with any opportunity I have, which I was coming out to be today. And it begins with a, there's a lot of quotes in it. The reason I beat the Austrians is they did not know the value of five minutes, said Napoleon Bonaparte. Do you know the value of five minutes? What you can accomplish in five minutes? Guard well your spare time. They are like uncut diamonds. Discard them and their value will never be known. Improve upon them and they will become the brightest gems in a useful life, wrote Ralph Waldo Emerson. Horace Mann wrote, lost yesterday, somewhere between sunrise and sunset, at least two golden hours, each set with 60 diamond minutes. No reward is offered for they're gone forever. Do you snatch, sighs or seize and enjoy every moment of time? After all, it's the most valuable thing you can spend. I would not exchange my leisure hours for all the wealth in the world, wrote French statesman Mirabeau. Time is your most valuable asset and worth far more to you than any money. Why load yourself up with more and more material, God, material goods beyond your ability to live comfortably? A wise person enjoys what little they have, while a fool is in search, constant search of more and more. What good are friends, books, the interest of travel, or the delights of home if you do not have time for their simple enjoyment? Lord Nelson said, I owe all my success in life to having been always a quarter of an hour beforehand. Are you prompt in meeting appointments, or are you habitually late and guilty of wasting the precious time of others? Being prompt gives a good impression on others and a demonstration of thoughtfulness and consideration. Each second we live in is a new and unique moment of the universe, a moment that never was before and never will be again wrote Pablo Casals. Each morning, your purse of time is magically filled with 24 hours. It's yours to manage for the day. Are you focusing your energy and ability more on contributing than on consum consuming? A person of success achieves their goals while a person of significance changes the world. Do you clearly understand the difference Albert Schweitzer, my, one of my favorite people, I'm going to speak more about him next week, said that everybody should live their life. Now, this, this, it might be a little bit harder quote, but maybe some of you have thought about this, and I think it makes sense. Everybody should live their life as if the end of their life was sitting on their shoulder, or death was sitting on their shoulder. That's, we know that that's possible, so live today. There is no moment like the present. Do it now, Schweitzer said. Establish priorities and remember that there is one thing among all the others that should be done first. First thing first and one at a time is a motto to keep in mind. Are you letting urgent matters cry out the more important things you should be doing? Are you wasting $5 time on a five cent job? Are you the foolish one who seeks happiness in the distance instead of the wise person who grows it right now under their feet, where they are. And I've 
often like this, this quote, maybe you've heard this time before, the, the time you enjoy wasting is not wasting time. Maybe sometimes you've had a day like that, said, boy, I didn't do much. Oh, that was great. <laughs> and I like this line. Do you realize, and, and see how this might be true, I think it certainly is for me, that stress is caused by being here but wanting to be there. You're always thinking of something in the future that you've got to do. Oh, I'll we'll we'll wait till this happens, or wait till this happens, or wait can I get this or that. Forgetting about now. Are you in the present but wanting to be in the future? Be here now. Be the keen spirit who seizes this prompt occasion. And of course, the old axiom, why put off until tomorrow what you can do today? Are you waiting for the time to be just right to start doing something that you know is worthwhile and should be done at once? You know in your heart that the time will, the time will never be just right. No such thing as maybe just right. Now is the point of power. Do what you can with what you have and do it now. Far better it is to dare mighty things, to win glorious triumphs, even though checkered by failure, than to take rank and whose poor spirits who neither may enjoy much more nor suffer much because they live in the gray twilight that knows not victory nor defeat. That was stated by Theodore Roosevelt. All my possessions for a moment in time were the words spoken by Queen Elizabeth I on her deathbed. At that moment, Queen Elizabeth I truly knew the value of time. She knew that time is the one resource that she could not regenerate. The life you are living now is the real thing, not a dream rehearsal or a dress rehearsal that you can get right the next time around. Do it now. Fight to live a life that is an expression of your own uniqueness. There will never be another you. I have a card from a friend that we were with yesterday, Patty Heidenberg, gave me that I placed on top of my bookshelf with some other uh, good remembrances and mementos. It's a quote from Oscar Wilde. And it simply states, be yourself. Everyone else is already taken. <laughs> Then we all know the next quote, of course. Measure your life not by the number of breaths you take, but by the moments of time that take your breath away. Is this the morning of your life? Is there a dawn within you? Do your elastic and vigorous thoughts keep pace with the sun so that your day is a perpetual morning? And I'm not too sure why I started this, but for some reason I've been doing it for a long time, and I'm not too sure why, but I often just say good morning all day long. And people, if I answer the phone, I'll say good morning, and they'll say, Greg, it's like 4 o'clock in the afternoon. I don't know why I do that, but I've been doing it for a long time. I just say good morning. Maybe it's because it's the start of a new day, and it's just brighter than in the evening. Start your day in the proper manner, and the tone of the day will be set for the entire day. Each day is a little life. And every morning of your life is a fresh beginning. Time goes, they say. No, time stays, we go, wrote Henry Dobson. Therefore, guard your time, watch over it, every hour, every moment, every minute. Give each moment the weight of your awareness and its true and due fulfillment. Ride time's winged chariot, ride on. Again, that's the article, and I hope you appreciate it. I have a couple, one or two more comments. Oh, I'm looking, my, my wife says, don't look at your watch, Greg. Look up there. Nobody knows you're looking at the clock up there. <laughs> so another page. I guess Nicholas does that, too. He says, I'm almost done. Stick with me. <laughs> I'm almost done. Stick with me. Uh, in a book entitled Praying, Praying Like Monks, Living like fools, the, the author Tyler Stanton asks, what do I need to be spiritually healthy? 
and provides this answer, you must ruthlessly, ruthlessly eliminate hurry from your life. In the scriptural book of Isaiah, we read, they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. They wait on the Lord. Our text and the psalmist reiterates, and we, you've probably heard this phrase too, but maybe take it to heart in a different way this morning. And the psalmist says, be still and know that I am God. If we have a faith in life, faith in whatever spiritual perspective we have, relax and trust in it. Life will go on. Our text this morning is from the Sermon on the Mount. I tell you, do not be anxious. Let the birds of the air, they neither sow nor weep nor gather into barns, so God feeds them. Are you not of even more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add one cubit to their span of life? I need to, <laughs> Carolyn can vouch for this, I need to tell myself that a lot. Do not be anxious about tomorrow. For tomorrow will be anxious for itself. But the day's own trouble be sufficient <laughs> for the day. You don't need more than today. I listened to the lecture at the Aspen Institute recently entitled, The New Science, and how's this one uh, for a title? The New Science of Everyday Wonder and Awe and How It Can Transform Your Life. The professor of psychology from the University of California named Dr. Keltner mentioned that since the pandemic, there has been a 30% increase in anxiety and depression reported within the United States. He said this can be helped by being more cognizant of the moments, the day-to-day -day moments of awe and wonder around us and to deliberately take the time to fully comprehend these brief moments. How you look at things makes a major difference. How we appreciate those little things in life. He specifically said to make sure you find at least <laughs> five minutes of awe and wonder each day. He also said be aware of the bigger picture in which we exist and think of something vast that we are part of such as nature and spirituality, he said. Spirituality today needs to be felt and experienced. And I think spirituality today is completely, is a new interpretation of life than it was even 2,000 years ago, how people have been interpreting things, sometimes in a literal sense, and I think it narrows things. We have a broader view of life here. So I think learning to savor every moment of the day and therefore realizing that every day and every moment is a tremendous spiritual gift. And then to somehow, and I'm not, each one will do this in your own way, but to see the divine in everyday life is to live in the spirit of, of Christ. Now, when I say the spirit of Christ, that doesn't mean just Jesus, uh, because Jesus doesn't know his last name was Christ. That's what we've added later. But to be Christ is to see the bigger picture, as Jesus did and taught in the Sermon on the Mount. It's about living and appreciating every moment. But it's simultaneously realizing the bigger picture of life and the challenge will be met with the truth, and this too shall pass. God, or our image of God, whatever that might be, is the big picture. Knowing this allows us to relax in the little pictures of each day. This can be called, which is a phrase been used, the eternal now. We take this eternal concept, this infinite concept, and realize it for ourselves right now at this very moment. It's a gift. There's an old joke about a man who asked God how a million years was to God. And God replied, but a minute to you. Then the man asked God what a million dollars was to God. And God replied, oh, but a single penny to you. Then the man asked, well, can I have just one of your pennies? And God smiled and replied, but of course, just a minute. <laughs> Did it take a moment? 
our perceptions of the divine can put life into a greater perspective. Knowing this helps us. Every second we live is a new and unique moment of the universe. Time is our most valuable commodity. It is truly the only thing that you can not buy, sell, stop, or reverse. It's a fleeting nature is a reason life fleeting nature is a reason life is so ultimately precious. Uh, and from Winnie the Pooh, what day is it? asked Pooh. It's today, squeaked Piglet. My favorite day, said Pooh. As the psalmist said, this is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it.